tell your story. So many wonder how I survived. I can't say it was easy, but I'm still alive. God never. about you, but yesterday I had, a, I had a time of my life. I hadn't party like that in so long, I had to go home and sit in some Epsom salt. So with that being said, we're getting ready to start our service for the day for our 149th annual church anniversary. And for those that's willing and able, please stand for the reading of our scripture. Our scripture reading will be coming from Matthew 7, verse 24 through 7. Matthew 7, from the King James Version. And it reads as follows. Therefore, whoever hears these sins of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on a rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them would be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat the house, and it fell. A great was it fall. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Thank you. Good morning. It is time for prayer. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you with bowed heads and humble hearts. We want to praise and glorify you because you are worthy to be praised. God, you are the Lord most high, the Lord our healer, the Lord of peace, the great I am. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity you've granted to us this morning. We thank you for your promise that you are near us whenever we pray. You 
promise that your love is eternal. You promise salvation to all who believe in your son. Father God, we forgive those who have sinned against us. We also confess that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We ask that you forgive us of our sins and draw us closer to you. Create us in, create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. Lord, we thank you that for allowing us to celebrate Mount Gilead's 149th year anniversary. We thank you that we are one in Christ, and we pray that as members of your body, your Holy Spirit will knit us together in bonds of unity and love. Lord, please continue to protect us from the wiles of the enemy who seeks to destroy and cause divisions among your body. Please continue to equip us both individually and corporately with talents and gifts along with hearts and desires to use them in ways that are pleasing in your sight. Give us wisdom, Lord, to teach and to learn your ways. We pray that you will help us to never forget those persons who struggled and faced challenges to build and grow this church for the past 149 years. We also pray for continued strength and guidance, for we know there will be struggles and challenges ahead. Of course, there are no struggles and challenges that you, dear Lord, cannot handle. So we will lean and depend on you, Lord, because your word says, trust in you with all our hearts. Do not lean on our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge you, and you will make straight our path. Lord, we ask that you bless the minister who will bring forth your word today. Let us have listening ears and receptive hearts for your truth. We pray that you will continue to bless and keep Pastor Baptiste and his family in your care. Lord, please bless all who are assembled here in the sanctuary and also those who are in our viewing audience. Lord, we pray that the Mount Gilead church body will not be motivated by selfishness, but in humility may we seek to regard the needs and necessities of others before our own. Please grant us many more anniversaries to give thanks and honor to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forever. In Jesus' name.
wonderful to be in God's presence. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful to praise God. To be in his glory. In his presence. Help us in his praise team. the Lord with a voice of triumph. We have the victory in this place. We are celebrating 149 years. Hallelujah.
aunties, other visiting pastors, visitors, family and friends, and those watching online. What a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord. Good morning and welcome. Today, we welcome you to Mount Gilead Baptist Church as we celebrate 149 years. church on a solid rock, standing for decades, serving for generations, and solidified by the Savior. The church signifies strength, steadiness, and durability. In it, there can be no faltering, no wavering, as it is rooted in truth. The church is a place of fellowship, a place of refuge, a place of true seekers where prayer warriors gather together and true worshipers come to lift up the name of Jesus. The church, my brothers and sisters, is a place where the leader feeds the flock, where you come as you are and you leave better than you arrive, saying, I will trust in the Lord, I will praise him, I will lift him up, because nothing else matters. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Not only is Jesus a rock, but his gospel is also a rock, a sure foundation. As we embark upon this journey to further the legacy of Mount Gilead Baptist Church, be confident, be encouraged, and steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For here at Mount Gilead Baptist Church, we are a church where everybody is somebody. Welcome to Mount Gilead. Baptist Church. Be blessed. Good morning, Mount Gilead. Giving my obedience to God, who is the great head of my life and his darling son, Jesus Christ. It's an honor, as well as a privilege, to read our 149th church history. The Mount Gilliam Baptist Church was organized on a plantation on Highland Road and Guardia Lane in September of 1873 by the Reverend Lemuel Hatter, the late Reverend Lemuel Hatter, along with a small group of dedicated Christians that branched out from the Guildfield Baptist Church. In 1909, a storm destroyed the church, which, had, which we had to, they had to reconstruct. Reverend Lemuel Hatter and Reverend Steve Bell were charged with keeping the church together after relocation. Reverend Anderson Hatter was elected pastor in 1927, and in 1931, the church was forced to leave the Doolittle Plantation and held services in a house belonging to the late Sister Sarah Hatter. In 1938, this present site was found for the new church. Sister Nettie Glasper, one of the late mothers of the church, presented it to the church. On November the 2nd, 1940, 18 faithful members moved into the new church building. After that, the membership began to grow. And in 1960, under the leadership of the late Reverend Morris J. Parker Sr., the church was incorporated. A Louisiana charter was granted, and the church bylaws and constitution were set up, all in hopes of building a new church. Reverend Parker passed the torch on to Reverend Gregory Glasper. 
In 1988, under Reverend Glassford's leadership, the church applied for and received the loan for new construction. The church was torn down, the services were held at the New Canaan Baptist Church. And finally, in 1989, the church building was constructed. In 1997, the Glasper family paid off the mortgage in memory of the late Reverend Gregory Glasper. And in September of 1997, Elder Eric Schaefer Sr. was elected pastor under the leadership of Reverend Eric Schaefer, a mortgage burning ceremony was held on July 26, 1998. And in 2000, under his leadership, the Mount Gilliam Baptist Church financial affairs were brought under the state and federal government umbrella as mandated. In July 2002, Mount Gilliam Baptist Church elected Dr. Albert Green Jr as interim and later became the pastor. Under Pastor Green's leadership, the first spiritual administrative board was organized through the church and a piece of property next door to the church was purchased. In addition, we were blessed with Reverend Henry Mason and Reverend Michael Collins as our leader from 2016 to 2018. Pastor Lamar Baptiste was elected pastor on February 17, 2018, and installed on April 15, 2018. Under his leadership, many souls have joined the Mount Gilliam Baptist Church family. He is dedicated to teaching God's word to his people. Under his leadership, the church has been significantly upgraded, and the building we purchased, we built, upgrades to the building that we have today and purchase land for the future expansion of this church. Today, we appreciate the determination of our past leaders as they labored to keep the faith and set the stage for the great things we were enjoying here at Mount Gilead. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. It's the song that we sung when we walked into this building. And with Pastor Baptiste, I know grace will keep us going. want me to do. I promise I will serve him. Church, I'm going all the way. Pray for me.
this 149 year history. Although I've been here just for five years, I feel at home and I'm so thankful to be here. God bless you, Mount Gilliam. So I'm gonna tell you a very uh, quick story. I'm a storyteller. Um, when I was a teenager, uh, my family, we all went to California to visit some family members to San Diego. And there was one particular restaurant that we went to and had the, the breakfast food was so good. And so we decided to go there every morning. And there was this one particular man, we later on learned who he was. He was uh, the waiter and he was from Central America. And so a very nice guy and gave us good service. And my dad is known uh, for giving very good tips. And so he gave the tip to him and he was very happy. And the next day, the second day we went, third day, fourth day, it looked like that guy would jump over the tables just to come serve us. And so my dad, when he would take a sip of coffee, he's just running and fill, make sure it was always full to the point to where it almost would overflow. Almost to the point my dad had to say, hey, hey, stop, stop, please. You're doing a, a good job. And so when we think about this period of giving to the Lord, you know, the Lord is just like that waiter. The Lord is holding blessings in his hand. And when we give our best to him, God has it in his hand. In Malachi, it says to bring all the tithes in the storehouse that he would give us so many blessings that we would not have room enough to receive it. So at this time, we come happy, we come bold, we come expecting that God would give us overflow. So at this time, there are several ways to give. Uh, one, you can give in person. Uh, make sure that you fill out the envelope in its entirety. You can also give on our website. Uh, you can also give to our uh, app. Also, you can call and text to give at 225-224-7556 and put in the word give. At this time, we ask that you please stand for our offertory prayer. Let's begin. All good gifts come from you, dear Lord, and from these riches we bring this offering. Help us to use it for the furtherance of your purpose in this place and for the benefit of those in need. Amen. And for those who are physically able to stand, please remain standing. We're doing something a little different this Sunday. Uh, the ushers will uh, direct us as we uh, march around to bring our gifts to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
hands together and give them a praise. today is Pastor Samuel C. Lofton. Samuel C. Lofton Jr. is the son of the late Samuel Sr. and Modest Lofton. He is a native of Derrida, Louisiana. He moved to Lafayette to attend the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, where he completed his undergraduate studies. There, Reverend Lofton became a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Reverend Lofton is employed full-time in ministry and serves as a pastor of education and youth at Good Hope Baptist Church where Dr. Ricky Carter is pastor teacher. Pastor Lofton also serves as the Bible, I'm sorry, also serves as the Bible instructor at Second Baptist Church and New Hope Baptist Church under the shepherding of Dr. Leo D. Cyrus Sr. Pastor Lofton is a director of the Young People's Department of the Greater Louisiana Baptist Convention, where he oversees the workings of the programs for children and youth. He also serves as the director of the Young People's Department of the Seventh District Ministry Baptist Association and the dean of the youth for the Seventh District Congress of Christian Education. He is an instructor, instructor for National Baptist Convention USA. Pastor Lofton is currently pursuing a Master of Divinity at the Baptist Missionary Theological Seminary in Jacksonville, Texas. Pastor Lofton's fear of influence and opportunities extend to motivational speaking for schools and other civil and civic organizations. Reverend Lofton's, ministry, Reverend Lofton's ministry of preaching and teaching aims to present the word of God with clarity, simplicity, and conviction so that the truth can be applied to all ages and in all situations. After the song of praise, the next voice we will hear is Pastor Samuel C. Lofton. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. We are so thankful to be celebrating 149 years. God has truly been good to this church. And I'm thankful for my wife being with us on this morning. She led praise and worship, Sister Dr. Charlotte Britton. And at this time, I'm going to ask a close friend of mine, Brother Roland Houston, to come and bless us on this morning. Come on, you give him a hand at this time. I've had some good days And I've had some hills I've had to climb I've had some weary days And some lonely nights But we Sometimes my clouds hang low, so low I can hardly see my road. But then I ask this question, Lord, why so much pain? For He knows. 
cares for me. Although my weary, my weary eyes just don't see. So I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. God, God has been good to me. He said amen. Amen. I have been blessed being in the fellowship of believers in worship and praise. I have enjoyed myself thoroughly this morning. And then to be in the presence of my good friend and brother, Pastor Baptiste. God bless you, man. And thank you for this opportunity to come and share with your people. Well, let's give God praise for Pastor Baptiste. And then for your 149 years. That's a long time, especially for us. <laughs> Amen. 149 years. Uh, with that in mind, I want to share a passage of scripture with you uh, this morning that is dear to my heart. Um, and that is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 through 39. And I want to read it this morning from the message translation. So whatever translation you have, just follow along and notice the variation in how words are expressed and ideas are conveyed. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 through 39. When you have it, say, I got it. If you need more time, say, wait a minute. Amen. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Remember those early days after you first saw the light? Those were the hard times. Kicked around in public targets of every kind of abuse. Some days it was you, other days your friends. If some friends went to prison, you stuck by them. If some enemies broke in and seized your goods, you let them go with a smile knowing they couldn't touch your real treasure. Nothing they did bothered you. Nothing set you back. So don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourselves then. It's still a sure thing. But you need to stick it out, staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the promised completion. It won't be long now he's on the way. He'll show up most any minute. But anyone who is right with me thrives on loyal trust. If he cuts and runs, it won't be very happy. 
But we're not quitters who lose out. Oh, no. We'll stay with it and survive trusting all the way. I want to talk this morning from the thought, persevere. Amen. Can you say that to your neighbor? Persevere. Try the other neighbor. Say it to your other neighbor. Persevere. What, what about the one behind you? Persevere. Persevere. Some time ago, when then candidate for the Supreme Court, Kentonji Brown Jackson was going through a confirmation hearings, she was under so much scrutiny by those who opposed her candidacy. And she told the story about the time she was on the campus of Harvard and feeling discouraged and disgusted and feeling like she did not belong there at the verge of quitting and giving up. She says that she passed a woman who obviously could see her frustration and disappointment. And she said the woman said to her one single word that strengthened her for the rest of the journey. And that word was persevere. You all remember that. And what I want to say to you after 149 years is persevere. That just as you have arrived at this point and this moment on this journey, there is still a ways to go. And I'll shout this morning that of all of the good things God has done for this church and through this church, he's not through yet. Somebody should have shouted right there. And not only does that apply to the church, but that applies to our lives personally, that as good as God has been and is to us, I believe this morning that he has not given us all of his best. But to get to God's best and to get to God's blessing, you have to persevere through the hard times. Are you hearing me this morning? The book of Hebrews is a fascinating book because it addresses three groups of people throughout the text. And the three groups of people very well may be represented in here this morning. The first group were those who had defected from the faith. They started out, but then they abandoned the faith altogether. And we see that happening so much today where people are now becoming social media celebrities where they come on and denounce that they have left Christianity because they discovered something new or different than what they had been told. And they confess and profess that they are no longer Christians. They defect from the faith. And I got a lot of calls and inquiries about that. And I kept telling people they didn't defect from the faith of Christ. They just never had faith in Christ. Are you hearing me this morning? And so we are moving toward a day and an age where the Bible says that there will be a great departure from the faith. So don't be alarmed when you see people leaving the faith. They never really trusted God and trusted in Christ from the first. The Apostle John says it this way. If they would have believed, they would have remained with us, but they left from us because they were never... Are you hearing me this morning? Don't get discouraged and think that Christianity has failed because if Christianity fails, then Christ has to fail. And if Christ fails, then the Father who sent him had to fail. There were those who defected from the faith. Secondly, there are those in the book of Hebrews who had uh, forsaken the fellowship. Oh, God, help me preach this right along here. They, they got to a point 
that they felt that they didn't need the fellowship with other believers, so they departed from the fellowship. And we can see that trend happening in our day and time where people feel they get new revelation and believe they don't need church anymore, that church is not essential. And they'll say, you don't have to go to church to be saved. And to that I say, you're right. You don't have to go to church to be saved, but you do need church to survive. (laughs) Are you hearing me? Any believer who is in Jesus Christ needs the company, the fellowship of other believers if you're going to survive in this life. And so many of them had neglected attending the fellowship. Are you hearing me? And we see that today. But then he writes to that group of people who were determined to stick it out. That they were determined that no matter what happened, they were going to stay with the Lord. And then they were going to stay with the fellowship. In spite of the highs and the lows, in spite of the trials and the troubles, they had made up their mind that they were going to stick it out. And I just want to ask in, in here this morning, is there anybody with a determined mind this morning? <laughs> that you're going to stick it out, that you're not going what they say in the rid of peace of the way, but what our sister said this morning, you are decided you are going all the way. So he says to them some powerful things, and I want to share some of them with us on this morning. First thing that he says to us, if you are going to persevere, you got to remember the past. Whew. Tell your neighbor, remember the past. That's an important. The past is not to be lived in, but the past is to be remembered. He tells them that you've got to remember what it was like before when you went through those difficult times. And when you went through the difficult times, you understood just how good God is. When you go through the hard times, you understand just how faithful God is. When you have gone through the fire and the flood, you come to realize that God is better to you than you are to your own self. And I wish I had five people that would be a witness this morning and testify that when you look back over your life and you examine the hardships that you've gone through and you look at where you are now, you come to the conclusion that it was nobody but the Lord who brought me, who kept me, who held me, who sustained me, who carried me, who strengthened me, and who supplied everything that I need he says you remember those days those were some hard times but you made it (laughs) you made it you can you you can testify your daddy brought you through it and did you switch daddies So if your daddy did it then, the reality is your daddy can do it. And so to persevere, you got to learn to gaze back and then look forward. (laughs) Tell your neighbor, gaze back and then look forward. Now now you got to do it in that order. You got to gaze back and then look forward. Because let me tell you what will happen. If you start staring back, (laughs) you're going to lose focus. Right? And the church has to progress. Tell your neighbor progress. It's good to remember history, but it ain't good to live in it. (laughs) And so what I, I come to realize that a lot of times... We have what Bishop Paul Martin says, we live in frozen success. (laughs) We get caught up on what we did back then that we no longer have the desire to transform and change and do what is necessary so that we could go. (laughs) 
You can't get stuck <laughs> with the success of yesterday. I wish somebody would hear me. Because if you get stuck in the success of yesterday, you become a museum. You know what you do at a museum, don't you? You go and you visit the... <laughs> right? And what we have done for so many years is we have celebrated the past so much that we have lost sight of the progression of the future. <laughs> Let me tell you when you're frozen in the past, when all you can talk about is what we used to do and how we used to do it and the way it used to be. That that's a sign that you're stuck in the... <laughs> Are you hearing me this morning? I almost said something. Tell your neighbor, thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but when you are focused on the future, you gaze at the past, but then you look toward the future. <laughs> Not just at what is, but somebody got to shout what could be. But you can't get to what could be if you stuck at what used to be. And I think the pandemic has conditioned us and has made the ground palatable enough for us to make some major transitions. Because we had to do some stuff that we never done. I wish somebody would hear me. <laughs> In the pandemic, we started doing church in an hour. My question is, what were we doing in my other two hours? <laughs> somebody got it, and somebody didn't. If we can learn to worship God in an hour and to praise God in an hour, what took so long before the pandemic? Can I tell you, a whole lot of unnecessary, a whole lot of stuff that was unnecessary. He says, you got to remember the past. You got to remember who you were. You got to remember what God did. You got to remember how you made it through. But don't get stuck in the past. Just remember it. And whenever you're remembering the past, it's always a point of celebration to see how good God has been. Not only that, not only does he say you remember those days, those were some hard times. Second thing he says to us, if we're going to persevere, somebody got to get this. You got to have the right people in your proximity. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you got to have the right people around you. <laughs> See, when you get discouraged about church, you got the wrong people <laughs> around you. Can I, can, I, can I tell you that again? If you get discouraged about church, you got the wrong people around you. When you get to the point you feel like quitting and you call somebody and you want to quit sooner, you got the wrong people. And what I've discovered is that a whole lot of us have the wrong people around us because all they talk about is negativity. They always talk about what's not right. They always talk about what's wrong. They always talk about what needs to be done. And they never showed up for nothing. Don't participate in nothing. You got the wrong people in your... Some people have stopped giving and supporting ministry because they listen to Uncle Cletus under the tree. I don't know why you giving all your money to the, Uncle Cletus. Why are you worried about what I'm doing with my? 
didn't you just ask me for a dollar to get you a 40? Got to have the right people in your proximity. Look at the text. He says, you were kicked around in public, targets of every kind of abuse. Some days it was you. (laughs) See? So when you go through it, you got to have the right people around you. You got to surround yourself with people who have been through some things with the Lord. You got to surround yourself with some people who've been in the valley and knows that you don't stay in the valley always. That if you hang on in there and you do what David said, you keep on walking through the valley, that you eventually come out of the valley. That's the kind of people you need in your proximity. You need people to tell you, stay with the Lord. To stay with the church. You need people to hold you accountable. You need the person to tell you go home. Go straight home. Somebody got it. And somebody didn't. The right people in your proximity. Because how many of you will be honest and admit you're not always strong. I don't care how saved you say you are. You're not always strong. That sometimes you are at the breaking point to give in to all kinds of temptation. To give in to quitting. But you need that person in your life sometimes to push you. And sometimes to pull you. (laughs) And you ought to have some names in your head. That they will push you. To go forward, but they'll pull you back from getting caught up in stuff. You need that person that you don't always agree with. You need that person that's going to tell you the truth. You need those people in our lives. And what I've discovered is most of us, that's the kind of people we don't want around. Always talking about the Lord. Think they more saved than anybody. People in the right proximity. Tell your neighbor the proximity. See, because here is the thing. Is that the enemy knows that our protection is in our fellowship. The enemy knows that. If you've ever watched wildlife shows, you will find out that the lion is stalking the prey. And the lion sneaks up on the prey. And then the lion roars. And then the the prey, they scatter. And then the lion looks for the one who is the weakest, who's lame, and who's isolated. Teach, boy. And that's the one he goes after. And that's why you need to be in the company and the fellowship of other believers. And listen, and tell your neighbor, and we got to learn not to leave each other. When you hear the lion roar, don't leave the person next to you. We all go. Are you hearing me? You need people to push you forward. You need people to pull you back. And you ready to shout on this? And then you need somebody that's going to pray for you between the pushing and the pulling. Do you have that person in your life that you can call and they will pray with you and they won't excite your anger and frustration? They will tell you, hey, that's all right. That's, that's a part of, that's part of church. Because we all said at some point in time, I ain't going back. Now, be honest up in here. Haven't you said that before? I ain't going back. You don't need that person. I don't blame you. You need that person that's going to stop and pray for you because sometimes what we're frustrated over is not the problem. The problem is our perspective. 
Let me hurry. It says not only do we need uh, to remember the past and not only do we need the right people in our proximity, but you got to recognize the opportunity to pour into people. That's part of the fellowship is connecting with people so what God has put in them can be poured into me. Teach, boy. That's why we got to get to know each other. Are you hearing me? But you know what happens at church? We only click with the people we click with. We only get involved when certain people are leading it. If they got quiet. Uh That either means you're thinking or I need to leave that alone. But we pretty much don't fellowship with everybody. We just fellowship with who we know. I don't know them, so I don't really bother with them. Right? But I know them, so if they doing it, if they leading it, I'm going to help. Are you hearing me? But God has put something in us to pour in to other people and the other person might not be the one sitting next to you. Are you hearing me? That's why we got to get to know people and not just hang with the same people and talk with the same people all the... You know how it is when church have fellowship? Somebody call and ask you if you coming? Who there? Who all there? By the time they give you the roll call, you could have took a shower, got dressed, and drove over there to see for yourself who's. And it only takes that one name to come up. Ray, Ray, now, I ain't going. Mm-mm, I was going, but you done told me Ray, Ray, there. And I don't have nothing to do with Ray, Ray. What Ray, Ray did to you, I don't know. But he looked at me the other Sunday, and he didn't say nothing. And I just, I don't like people who look at you and don't say nothing. When you don't know what God done put in Ray Ray. And what God put in Ray Ray might be what you need for your breakthrough. (laughs) Are you hearing me? We've got to get out of this personality thing in church and learn that my gifts are not for me but they are for other people. And I don't have to like them. I just want God to use me and pour my gift out and let it flow into them. He says, you got to recognize it. Here's what he says in verse 34. If some friends went to prison, you stuck When they went through hard times, you were. One of the number one reasons people leave church, it ain't because of mess. It's because they don't feel the church was there when they went through the most difficult time. Are you hearing me? It means something when you show up to a church member's loved one's funeral. That means something. What that says is you care. Are you with me? You stuck by them. You use what God has given you to bless somebody else, even if it's nothing but time. Because what some people need to heal is just somebody to spend time And tell your neighbor, there's a lot of opportunity. God has put every one of you in Mount Gilead for a purpose. That 
means everybody is important. Woo! And the tragedy is you may be sitting by treasure, but because you don't know them, you treat them like trash. I'm going to tell you, God done put some stuff in crackheads that lifelong Baptists need. Ask me what? Sticking with each other? Crackheads will share the pipe with somebody and they just had a fight with and church folk won't speak to their neighbor and they don't even know them. You got to look for an opportunity to use your gifts and abilities without them asking you. Because you know what we do? It's two things we do when it comes to ministry. We wait to be asked and we pray. There's something going on at church. Uh, I, I have the ability to organize, but ain't nobody asked me, so I ain't helping. And then when somebody do ask you, let me pray about it. You ain't prayed in a whole week. Now when they ask you to do something in church, now you got to pray about it. That's when we get our spiritual. You want to do something on program? Let me pray about it. You ain't pray to go to work. You ain't pray to go to the game. But you got to pray to do something for the Lord. They didn't ask you if you wanted overtime. You went, Mr. Boss Man, if you need somebody to work overtime, I was here. If God has given you ability in a certain area, and you see the church needs it, you ought to say, here I am. You got to recognize those opportunities. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Look at what the text says. And secondly, you got to have the right priorities. Tell your neighbor the right priorities. He says, if some of your friends went to prison, you stuck by them. Verse 34, if some enemies broke in and seized your good, you let it go with a smile, knowing they couldn't touch your real treasure. we got to learn how to prioritize things. Because we're losing our minds over stuff that we wasn't going to keep forever anyway. Man, one morning... A couple of years ago, I woke up to go to a meeting at church, and all four of my tires were gone. I'm t- that messed me up. I'm on my way to church. I had finished my meditation and devotion. And I was on my way to church, and I walked out, and the car was on blocks. And I said, boy, they got somebody good. Then it dawned on me, that's your car. So I did what any sane person would do. I turned around. I went back upstairs. I said, let me start over. I went back downstairs. My car was on blocks. So I started walking around the complex looking for somebody who had my tires and rims on their car. And I had my friend with me. You know, if David can have a slingshot, And I said to myself, I wish, I, I wish a Negro would. And I'm walking around trying to find my tires on somebody else's car with a gun in my pocket. Now, I don't know if I really would have did anything if I saw it. But I was just that mad. Then it dawned on me, fool, you got insurance. You walking around hunting 
Somebody, you don't know who it is. You don't know what they do for a living. You don't know where they've been the last 30 years. And you about to lose your life over four? Priorities mixed up. And we're losing our mind over stuff that really don't. Can I help somebody this morning? Everything you worried about can be replaced. But I love him. He could be replaced. She was my everything. She could be replaced. Everything we worry about is replaceable. And we getting sick worrying over stuff that we can be re- that can be replaced with something even better. He said, when they broke in and stole your stuff, you let it go. With a smile on your face. Knowing, watch this, they couldn't touch what really mattered. Ooh, the stuff that ought to bring us joy is not stuff that you could lose. If your joy is attached to stuff you can lose, you're going to be miserable all the days of your life. Because you can get stuff. It's a matter of can you keep the stuff you get. You can get a new car. I can get a Bentley if I wanted to. And I keep it for 90 days. But what I'm going to look like falling on the ground when the people come get that stuff? Well, I said 90. It might be 30. Look, you got to have the right priorities and start looking at life the right way. What's really important? Are you hearing me? I'm closing. My time is up. Then he says, listen. The last thing is you got to resolve to be patient. Tell your neighbor to be patient. He says in verse 36, but you need to stick it out, staying with God's plan so you will be there for the promised completion. Tell your neighbor, you got to persevere and you got to be patient because when you are patient, you will eventually see God's promise come to pass. Somebody should have shouted on that. That if you just hang on in there and you don't throw in the towel and you don't give up, you will see God's plan come to pass. That's why I want to tell you as I go to my seat, that's why you stay with the church. You stay with the Lord. Because whatever the Lord promised, somebody should have shouted right there. If you stick it out, you will see it come to pass. Are you hearing me this morning? There are things you prayed for. Don't abandon the prayer. Just keep being patient and keep sticking it out. And sooner or later, God will bring it to pass. Somebody has been waiting on a blessing that you thought would never come. I just stopped by to tell you this morning, hang on in there. Persevere through the hard times. And sooner or later, you will see God work that thing out. Do I have at least five witnesses that can testify when I held on and I didn't give up, God brought me through. When I held on and I didn't give up, God made a way when I held on and I didn't give up. God gave me strength. And here I am today, better than I've ever been in my life because I persevered. Hang on in there. Ain't that what Jesus did? He endured the cross. He despised the shame. He hung on the cross and he died 
and they put him in the grave. But three days later, God raised him from the dead. There will be no resurrection had he not endured the cross, had he not endured the suffering, had he not endured the shame. Maybe somebody here today, you're going through some hard times in your life, but I just come to let you know, hang in there. Listen, you ought to encourage somebody sitting next to you and tell them, hang on in there. God's going to turn it around. God's going to work it out. God's going to flip the script. God's going to change it. God's going to bring you out. God's going to pick you up. I wish you were sitting to the, next to the right person who's going to encourage you to hang on in there. You don't know what somebody is going through. You don't know how quick they are to throw in the towel. But you need to turn to them and say, neighbor, I don't care what you're going through. Hang on in there. Stick it out. You will see God come through for you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? How many of you believe it? How many of you lived it? How many of you going to praise him for it? Even now. Persevere. Hang on in there. Lord, I'm lost for words. Brad, I don't know what you didn't did, but man, you were speaking to me, man. Gosh, Lord, what a word. Persevere, persevere. Listen, I don't know who is watching. Maybe you're sitting at home and, you know, he was speaking something big. He talked about fellowship. And sometimes, you know, we can be church hurt and we can sit at home and say, I'm not coming to church. I'm mad and I'm not coming, but this is the place that when you're upset, when you don't feel like it, come here. Where we can fellowship with one another. 149 years. I know the other pastors before me, they wanted to quit too. There were some times where they just wanted to throw in the towels. I can't take it, but because they endured to the end, pastor, God rewarded them. Listen, I'm here. I don't know how long God got me here, but I'm persevering. That's a word for me. With you or without you. I'm here. I'm here. And that's what you have to say, Mount Gillian. We about to leave here, but I need y'all to commit after the sermon saying today. I'm not worried about who is at the meeting, who's not at the meeting, but I'm going to start working. Maybe you're listening today. And you don't know Christ. You need him this morning. I'm telling you, you need Christ this morning. We can't leave this place and you're not saved. If you're here right now and you know that you don't have Jesus in your life, all of this preaching and teaching is nothing for you. You need the Savior in your life. And if that's you this morning, listen, don't look around you. Don't look at who's looking at you. Don't worry about who know your past. If you need Christ this morning, listen, stand up, come up, and let's give your life to Christ. I'm going to give you a few seconds here. Don't leave this place. If you're watching online, you can join and you can give your life to Christ. The Bible tells us it's simple. Come on, brother. That all you have to do is believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. Praise God, brother. If there's anybody else this morning, maybe you're looking for a church home. Listen, you need a place where you can grow in the word of God. You need a place where there's fellowship, as the pastor said a few minutes ago. This is a place where everybody is somebody. If that's you this morning, just a few more seconds. I remember the last Sunday I was about to close out and a woman caught me as I was leaving, about to leave the church. And she said, hold up, wait a minute. If that's you this morning, please come. Praise the Lord.
your name? Cardell. Last name? Brown. Good. Brother Cardell Brown, he's coming on his Christian experience. He's already been baptized. This brother here, he's taller than me, but he's younger than me. <laughs> but I am so glad, brother, you have made that commitment today to come here. Listen, the enemy is going to attack you like crazy now. He's going to try to stop you from coming back. There's going to be some times where you falter. But listen, continue to persevere. You heard what the pastor said. Continue to the end, man. And this is a church where we're going to love on you, man. We're going to help you in every area that you need. And we're going to make sure you grow in the word of God. And before you know it, they're going to see you over there with the deacons. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise. Right. He can do it. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, Brother Cardell, we are accepting you here as a full member of Mount Gilead Baptist Church with all rights and privilege. Let the church respond by saying, I. All right, brother, I'm glad to have you. Praise God. We're going to get you involved. Sister, where she's at? I can't see her face. There she is, Sister Carla's right there. Make sure before you leave, you connect with her so she can get your information to make sure we get you in the new members class. Um, that will be next Sunday after church. All right? So praise God for you, brother. Love you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Man, good word, brother. Good word. Good word. We're going to talk after church. <laughs> Again, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, two quick announcements. One, Sister Ville, make sure I'm getting it right. Her son um, passed on last week. And so we'll be sending out the service, the time for the service, so that we can support her. Um, with her family whenever the service is. So we'll send it out to the church so you can know when that is. Also, too, I want to thank everybody who came out for the church picnic on yesterday. Oh, my goodness. My back is hurting. <laughs> Some of y'all know, man, we did a lot of work on yesterday, but we had a lot of food. I heard that we was able to give a family a whole plate of what uh, pan of food. So we was able to continue to bless people while having fun so i thank god for that um also too i thank the committee i thank the committee of the um, church anniversary committee i know they don't want to stand but i thank everyone who have made this successful and i can't wait till 150 years if the lord says the same it's gonna be big on next year if the lord says the same amen amen also, too, we have refreshments in the back, so please don't leave. It's light refreshments that you can eat before you watch the game um, this morning, as well as our new members orientation will be immediately after church on Sunday, next Sunday. So we won't have Bible class, I mean Sunday school, but we'll have our new members orientation. So all those who've joined in the last two or three years, whoever you are, if you're deacon, deaconess, whoever, please stay. We're going to be talking about what it means to be a church member, and perseverance is one of them. Amen. 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 Let us stand. Praise the Lord. Give us some going home music. <laughs> Lord, I, we thank you this morning for the great fellowship and thank you for Mount Gillian, Lord, and for how you've used her in this community to change and transform people's lives. And Lord, we look forward to how you're going to take this church, this congregation, to a whole nother level. Lord, we praise you now in advance. Bless the food and the refreshments that have been prepared, Lord, and each member and household that is present here today. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us, to him be glory, dominion, and power, now and forever. Let the church say amen. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. <laughs>